Hello and welcome. My name is Hugh Williams and I'm the editor of Jane's International Defence Review and I have the pleasure and privilege to welcome you to today's online intelligence briefing which is uh, going to provide a market and technology outlook on maritime multifunction and surveillance radar. Uh, you will be uh, presented to by uh, four of our experts here at Jane's. Uh, MN Wasif, who is a senior analyst. Rob Levine, a senior research analyst for maritime radar. Alex Pape, a principal radar uh, naval analyst, rather, and Kelvin Wong, who is our Asia-Pacific uh, defense technology reporter. Uh, today's webinar is one of a series of approximately 40 events that will take place uh, during 2017, and it is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and module products, including the market forecast products. Starting with the emerging technological trends, the one radar shift has moved from the drawing board to an operational reality with all next generation frigates being fitted out with multifunction radars carrying out simultaneous air and surface surveillance as well as target tracking and fire control for short range and long range air defense. A key reason for this is the emergence of active electronically scanned arrays or ASA. The concept of phase array and design factors such as aperture size and beam switching speed have changed little over time, but the hardware to support such ideas has only been recently realized. A revolution in solid state technology, increasing RF power output, particularly with the emergence of gallium nitride based transmitters and processing capability increase have combined to make this happen. The transition from passive arrays or PESA to active arrays or ASA technology has brought the following advantages. ASAs have lower transmit and receive beamformer losses which lead to increased sensitivity of the radar. Lower transmit noise due to distributed TR uh, transmit receive modules by which non-coherent noise at the receiver gets cancelled out leading to better reception and detection in the presence of C clutter. The total market for maritime multifunction surveillance radars over the next 10 year period between 2017 and 2026 is approximately 18.75 billion US dollars. This total includes all ongoing deliveries as well as support to already delivered contracts and future opportunities both stated and derived. Stated opportunities are those where there is evidence of need, whether that be released information from government in the form of an official announcement or intelligence collected in the field from industry or another third party source. Derived opportunities are opportunities that are based on assumptions made by the analyst <coughs> looking at various factors within the existing fleet, whether that be aging fleets or missing capabilities that may be needed in the future. There is a clear growth in the market between now and 2023 especially after 2021. As radar deliveries and ship deliveries of future platforms increase, as well as increases in upgrades and supporting to existing platforms. We see a small drop off for 2025 and 2026, and our current assumption for this is that there is a small lack of information that allows us to build a complete picture of the years 2025 and 2026. As we get closer to those years, we would expect to see further opportunities to help build the forecast as we don't believe there will be a real term drop off in the size of the market in 2025 and 2026. This chart shows the production value of the radars to be delivered in the years 2017 to 2026. We have a current peak at 2023 of 1.4 billion US dollars. This is due to upgrades of the SP1 and deliveries of the new SPY6. There'll be more information on this radar later. There are also several deliveries of the SPQ-9B and some possible deliveries to the Saudis. As we can see on this slide, the largest share of the market is for the US market over the next 10 years. This is hardly surprising due to the SPY-6 radar going into production, as well as ongoing and possible future upgrades to the SPY-1 radar. The Chinese market is dominated by the production and delivery of the Type 346 radar, which is colloquially known as the Dragon Eye developed by the Nanjing Research Institute of Electronic Technology, which is going to be fitted to Chinese destroyers. For India, they have ongoing deliveries of the ELM-2248 for the Delhi-class destroyers, as well as on their future aircraft carriers. Thank you, Rob. For the final section of this webinar, I will present a snapshot of major naval shipbuilding and upgrade programs in the Asia-Pacific, highlighting the radar selected for these efforts where we're available to get a sense of what types of systems are being acquired. 
Australia will acquire nine new built future frigates under Project C-5000. In April 2016, BAE's Type 26 Global Combat Ship, the Carlo Bergamini class variant of the Fram multi-role frigate proposed by Pink and and the modified F-100 design offered by Navantia were named as the shortlisted contenders. The Australian Department of Defence has mandated that the selected design must be capable of supporting the CPAR-2 long-range active phase array radar under development by local company CA Technologies. The company is already supplying its first generation CPAR S-band electronically scanning radar system as the core component of the base array radar suite, also comprising the C-mount X-band active phase array illuminator, being retrofitted to the ANZAC class frigates as part of Project C-1448 Phase 2B. An RST was issued on 31st March 27, with the evaluation of the responses expected to conclude later in 2017 with the selection of the designer in 2018. Construction of the frigate, now valued at a total of US $28.2 billion, is currently scheduled to start in Adelaide, South Australia in 2020, although this timeline may slip to 2022 at the current place of planning and development. First pass approval was received in March 2015 for the acquisition under Project C-1448 Phase 4B of a modern long-range air search capability to replace the existing ANSPS-49 radar with the first installation expected in 2018. The same project will replace the existing identification friend of foe and secondary surveillance radar system. The Indian Navy has outlined its blue water ambitions in its maritime capability perspective plan, which covers its modernization efforts. It envisions a fully network-centric force with a fleet that will comprise three aircraft carrier battle groups and more than 40 surface combatants and submarines by 2020. More recent plans also point to a 212-strong fleet out to 2027. While the results of the service's modernization efforts has been mixed at best to date, it will nevertheless benefit from new and more capable platforms that are presently being planned or acquired. Project 17A is for a new class of seven, seven frigates to follow the Project 17 Chivalic class. Approval for the project was given in July 2009, and the ships are to be built at Magazon Dock and Garden Ridge Shipyards. The Project 17A frigate is an evolution of the three-ship Project 17 Chivalic frigate and will be slightly longer with a full load replacement close to 7,000 tons. The sensor fit of the Project 17A program is not clear, but a mix of indigenous and Israeli, as well as Russian-made systems, such as the BEL Apana and Shikari fire control radars, Delta 2238 AMDR-ER, and Fregat M2EM air and surface search radars can be found in the earlier program. Preliminary graphics released previously by the Navy suggest that ELTA's ELM-2248 MS-STAR radar system could be a feature of the new frigates, although this has yet to be confirmed. Besides the 17A program, India has also expressed interest in additional service combatants, including Russia's Project 11356M Emerald Grigorich class frigate, seven next-generation corvettes that will enter service from 2023, just want to very briefly take you through a few key takeaways from the webinar. The current advances in solid state technology have led to multifunction AESA radars becoming an integral part of all medium and large naval platforms, and we see that in continuing over the near term, near to long term. Rotating radars are being replaced with lighter, more efficient fixed array radars on integrated masts. This allows for fewer issues with maintenance. The US dominates the market for multifunction radars with the proliferation of high-capable systems required for new and existing platforms such as the AMDR and the EASR. The AMDR is set for first delivery in 2019 and has so far gone through three successful sea trials in 2017. There are a diverse range of ongoing or expected naval shipbuilding programs in the Asia-Pacific. These will have potential opportunities for radar suppliers from Western countries. China has embarked on an ambitious program to develop their next generation of naval radars. These could easily end up competing against Western and U.S. radars in the future. I forward to welcome you to our next uh, briefing, which is on uh, East Asia defense markets. Thank you for, for me and for everybody. I'm sure you enjoyed it, and uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm.